well. How are you today? Good, been busy? I have been, yeah. Yeah, give me five. Love the glasses. You look very cool. After nearly 50 years in the industry, Fred Harrison knows a thing or two about competing against the giants in the supermarket sector. Coles and Woolies, they're almost on every corner. They surround the independents and we have to fight and fight hard to maintain our market share. The CEO of Ritchie's, which has 78 supermarkets on the country's east coast, argues that one of the most cutthroat battles is over land. Yes, no question, Woolies, Coles will come in and purchase land and then sit on that land. I mean, we're not going to be able to say, oh, let's go into a location, knowing that a big Woolies or Coles is potentially going to open down the road from us in one, two, five, six, seven years' time. Land banking should be absolutely uh, stopped. Land banking has been a focus of an ongoing public inquiry into the conduct of the supermarkets held by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. Do you agree that a new supermarket entrant would find that to be a barrier to entry? Well, no, I think Aldi's demonstrated that they've been able to rapidly grow their, their network. The ACCC describes land banking as buying an interest in land without intending to develop or buying sites earlier than needed to lock competitors out. How significant a problem is land banking practice on the part of the majors? I would say it's a material problem for us. Metcash Foods is a major wholesaler that establishes and supplies smaller supermarkets like IGAs, including Richie's and The Friendly Grocer. There would be plenty of circumstances every year where there are sites that we may identify as being suitable for an IGA to, to open. And then when we investigate, we find that those sites are unavailable because they've been land banked by uh, one of the chains. The inquiry heard that Woolworths owns 65 undeveloped sites across the country and Coles 42. Earlier this week, Woolworths senior executive faced questions on the practice. So, Mr Kemler, is it your evidence that Woolworths has never, say in the last 10 years, acquired an interest in land without an intention to develop that land? As far as I know, yes. Council assisting interrogated Woolworths Managing Director of Property, Ralph Kemmler, over an internal document that referred to sites held for strategic reasons. Isn't this land banking? I don't believe so. I think you'll see that they're a combination of company homes, surplus land from developments that we've completed that are, are, are to be sold, or land uh, held pending other developments. The last chair of the ACCC to hold a public inquiry into the supermarkets was Graham Samuel in 2008. Since then, he says the regulator has gained powers that allow it to act against land banking. There has been introduced into the competition law a very important section, it's section 46, which deals with abuse of market power. And it seems to me that that's a section that should be tested by the ACCC if we've got instances of land banking, that is, land being acquired for an anti-competitive purpose to keep a competitor out of a market. The interim report also outlined a practice of buying entire shopping centres and kicking out competitors, including an example in Brisbane where Coles didn't re-sign the lease of an IGA and there's plans to replace it with their own store. They already had stores in the area it was patently not about having a presence, they already had a presence, but they obviously wanted to remove the independent from that area. A Coles spokeswoman told 7.30 it provided detailed information to the ACCC about the acquisition earlier this year. The company's bosses appeared today for the first time at the inquiry. In the 2024 financial year, Coles made $2 billion in earnings before tax a significant increase on the year before. Suppliers say they're being squeezed. Consumers say they're being squeezed. How is it that Coles is profiting? 
in these conditions. Our evidence would be that we have had quite a stable EBIT margin and the improvements that we saw between 23 and 24 were as a result of us taking actions within our business, uh, which drove efficiency and improved performance. From a consumer perspective, this inquiry is really focusing on pricing, the way prices are presented, shrinkflation, membership pricing and loyalty schemes. Consumer group choice is particularly concerned about supermarket membership schemes. What that will mean is that there is a lower price for people that are members of the loyalty program. And so if you are not a member of the loyalty program, you'll end up paying a higher price. We think that everyone should be able to access the cheapest prices for essential food and groceries at the supermarkets. So we think membership pricing is unfair. The inquiry also heard questions over privacy rights. Is the price that members have to pay for their member-only pricing giving up their data to Woolworths? There is some personal information to sign up to the program, um, which is relatively consistent across loyalty programs. It just strikes me as being just savvy marketing and um, yeah, part of the tools of marketing to ensure loyalty and loyalty um, you know, has its rewards. The rewards are in access to discounted goods and, and uh, whatever might be the case. The ACCC is slated to provide its final report to the government in February next year. Consumers have many questions and they're very sceptical, but it is only the ACCC that can really get to the bottom of what is happening with pricing by using its information gathering powers.